What if I told you a small, oily fish is outsmarting global shipping giants? It's true, while most people are busy tracking luxury cars or tech gadgets, 8 million tons of herring are being moved across the planet, fast, cold, and with military-level precision. Sounds wild, right? But here's the kicker. One tiny temperature slip can destroy an entire shipment. Billions of dollars vanish, just like that. And yet, it works. Every day, across oceans, through storms, past borders. Into villages, markets, and labs. Why? Because behind this fish is a secret world of sensors, AI, and sustainable tech, powering a global machine most people don't even know exists. It's not just seafood, it's survival, it's agriculture, it's innovation, it's everything. Most folks never stop to think about how a fish ends up in a market halfway around the world. One moment it's darting through icy waters, the next it's vacuum sealed in a supermarket freezer thousands of miles away. But behind that clean packaging is a wild race against time. A blend of old-school fishing grit and cutting-edge technology that keeps things moving like clockwork. Let's start at sea. Picture a Norwegian purse sina cutting through choppy waves before dawn. The water's dark, the air stings your face, and below the surface, herring flash like silver bullets. The crew doesn't hesitate. Nets sweep wide and fast, pulling in thousands of wriggling fish in minutes. These aren't your average boats, they're floating machines, equipped with chilling systems that kick in almost the second the fish hit the deck. You've got to be quick. With herring, speed isn't just nice, it's non-negotiable. Their quality starts slipping almost the moment they're caught. That's why the chilling process kicks off within minutes. We're not talking about tossing them on ice and calling it a day. These boats have advanced cooling systems that bring temperatures down with surgical precision. A couple degrees too warm for too long? You might as well throw the whole lot out, seriously. And here's where tech starts showing off. Sorting systems separate the herring by size and grade almost automatically. Some vessels use onboard AI-powered imaging tools to check for quality on the fly. Automation arms gently lift fish into separate bins. It's all about figuring out where each fish belongs before it even reaches land. A larger fish might be destined for filleting in Europe, while smaller ones might be heading for smoking in Africa. It's not random, it's strategy. Once the boat hits land, say in Iceland, Norway, or parts of Russia, things go into overdrive. The docks aren't just places to unload, they're full-blown processing zones. Conveyor belts snake out from the ship's hull. The fish move along like they're on a factory floor, heading straight into industrial flash freezers or gutting lines. If you've never seen a fish frozen solid in under five minutes, it's a bit surreal. These cold chambers aren't just cold, they're brutal. Minus 40 degree F, sometimes colder, enough to lock in freshness like nature hit the pause button. That's important. These fish might be halfway around the globe before they're opened again. And in this global market, freshness isn't a perk. It's the baseline. Everything depends on the cold chain holding strong. If it cracks even a little, it's game over. That's why the vacuum packing comes next. Fish are sealed into thick, airtight bags with labels showing where they came from, what time they were caught, and how they were processed. This isn't just food, it's data. Then come the trucks. Not just any trucks. These are mobile freezers with monitoring tech tracking every cubic inch. Temperature, humidity, CO2 levels, you name it. If anything drifts out of spec, someone's getting a notification in real time. These trucks move fast, cutting across Scandinavia, down through Germany, into ports like Rotterdam or Hamburg. Within a day or two, they're sitting in a shipping yard, ready to be loaded onto vessels that carry everything from cars to cotton to, you guessed it, tons of frozen herring. Container ships are something else. Hundreds of reefers, that's the industry slang for refrigerated containers, are stacked like building blocks. Each one has its own cooling system, and many are hooked into remote monitoring networks, if something goes wrong in a container somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic, someone sitting in an operations center in Denmark or Singapore will know. That's the level we're operating on now. And where are these fish going? It depends on how they've been processed. Fresh herring, rare but possible, is usually sent by air to places like Japan or high-end restaurants in Europe. Flash frozen whole fish go to markets in Africa where they're thawed, smoked, or fried on the spot. Pickled herring, meanwhile, travels in bulk containers to Germany, the Netherlands, or Scandinavian countries where people have a taste for the sour and salty combo. Then there's the dried stuff, often heading to Ghana or Nigeria, where it's a staple in soups and stews. But herring isn't just about food. 
Here's where things get a bit unexpected. Some of the catch doesn't go to human tables at all. It's ground down into fish meal, a high protein powder that fuels agriculture and aquaculture worldwide. It ends up feeding poultry in South America, tilapia in Asia, and sometimes even enriching soil in tech-driven agroforestry setups. It's a strange twist, but one that connects ocean harvests to inland farming in a very real way. And then there's oil. Herring oil is rich in omega-3s and used in everything from supplements to skincare. These products have strict standards, pharma level in many cases. That means the fish used to produce them can't just be handled casually. They have to be processed with almost clinical precision. From sea to extraction, there's a separate supply chain running parallel to the food-focused one, but just as tightly managed. All of this, every net dropped, every container loaded, relies on systems that hum along in unison agriculture, tech, logistics, food processing, they're all tangled together in a web that stretches across oceans. And while it might look like organized chaos from the outside, the people behind the scenes know exactly what they're doing. Still, not everything always goes as planned. In this business, one unexpected delay, a missed port slot, a broken refrigeration unit, a surprise inspection, can throw the whole chain into disarray. And the fish, they don't care about logistics, they spoil fast one tiny temperature swing and you've got a load no one wants and that's only part of the problem the challenges aren't just mechanical they're biological geographical and sometimes downright political here's something most people don't realize herring is one of the most delicate commodities in the global seafood trade for something that moves in massive volumes millions of tons every year it behaves like a diva backstage Temperature sensitive, fast to spoil, and constantly influenced by shifting regulations and market whims, this fish requires careful handling from the moment it's caught. And trust me, there's no such thing as autopilot in this business. Let's start with the biology. Herring spoil faster than most fish, a lot faster. We're talking a matter of hours before texture changes, skin darkens, and flavor turns. Even a small fluctuation, say two degrees C gas, can ruin a whole container. Imagine a shipment sitting on a dock in transit, or a reefer unit glitching for just one afternoon. That one hiccup? That's thousands of dollars gone. It's not just about being cold. It's about staying consistently cold without fail. You'd think modern refrigeration would be enough. And yes, today's cold chain systems are packed with sensors, smart alerts, and backup systems. But even the best technology can't always outpace nature. Especially not when you factor in delays at ports, customs checks, or that one driver who hits traffic outside Hamburg. This is why teams that handle herring logistics treat temperature logs the way pilots treat flight checklists, non-negotiable and checked a dozen times a day. Now, throw geography into the mix. The richest herring grounds aren't exactly near major airports or logistics hubs. They're tucked away in cold, remote waters. Think Iceland, Greenland, the Barents Sea, places where winter storms laugh in the face of shipping schedules. When a storm rolls in and blocks port access, boats have to wait it out, sitting on product that's perishable even with the best onboard systems. Ice-hardened vessels are essential in these waters, but even they can only do so much when conditions turn brutal. Timing becomes everything. You miss a docking window in these regions, and you're playing catch-up for days. That delay then pushes back processing, export deadlines, and delivery to end markets that are waiting on exact schedules. It's not like missing a FedEx drop-off, it can derail entire supply chains, especially in places where herring isn't just a nice-to-have, but a key ingredient in diets, agriculture, or even agroforestry cycles, relying on nutrient-dense fish meal. Then we have the regulatory layer. Welcome to a world of shifting quotas, environmental certifications, and evolving trade agreements. One year, a country's fleet might be allowed to catch 500,000 tons. The next year, that number gets cut in half because of sustainability efforts or stock levels. And don't even get started on tariffs. A change in one trade policy can flip a major export market overnight. One week, frozen herring is flowing freely into Southeast Asia. The next, it's caught in paperwork hell because someone updated an import restriction. Certifications like MSC, Marine Stewardship Council, matter more than ever, especially in countries pushing green consumerism and sustainable agriculture. If your catch can't prove it came from a certified source, you might not even be allowed to sell it. This has led to more digitized tracking, blockchain systems, centralized registries, and tech-driven monitoring tools that tag shipments with source-to-store transparency. 
Sounds impressive, but it also means even one missed scan or paper mismatch can delay or cancel an entire export. And it's not just governments making demands, consumers are paying attention too. They want to know how the fish was caught, how it was handled, and even what kind of fuel the ship used. Yeah, sustainability is a big deal now, not just for bragging rights, but for access to premium markets. Some buyers won't even touch a shipment if it doesn't meet emissions standards. That's pushed the industry into experimenting with greener logistics, using cleaner burning fuels, optimizing transport routes, even co-loading cargo with other frozen goods to cut down on emissions per shipment. On the opposite end of this high-stakes game, the bait market. Herring isn't just food, it's bait, especially in places like Maine, where it plays a critical role in lobster fishing. And here's where things get wild. Bait prices swing harder than cryptocurrency. One year, herring is cheap and abundant. The next shortages drive prices up 200%, and fishermen are scrambling to find alternatives. Some even switch to frozen imports or alternative species, but that affects the entire ecosystem of buyers, suppliers, and cold storage handlers. Plus, bait-grade herring isn't always handled with the same care as food-grade. That opens up a whole new layer of logistics and quality control challenges. Add to that the different cultural preferences across global markets, and the equation gets even more complex. Japan, for instance, wants whole frozen herring, bright-eyed, unblemished, and packed carefully. West Africa? The preference leans towards smoked or dried. European markets, meanwhile, might want pickled fillets ready for sandwiches. Each of these formats requires a different process, packaging, and shipping method. A misstep in product matching can mean you end up with the wrong format in the wrong country. An expensive mistake. Tech tries to solve some of this through demand forecasting tools and AI-driven market analysis, but here's the thing, human behavior is still unpredictable. Religious holidays, seasonal eating habits, and even food trends on social media can change demand in a snap. One TikTok recipe goes viral in Jakarta, and suddenly there's a spike in demand for marinated herring fillets weeks after export plans were finalized. So suppliers have to stay nimble. That means tighter integration with buyers, faster feedback loops, and more flexible logistics networks. In some cases, small fishing cooperatives are linking into global cold storage networks using centralized platforms that sync data across multiple suppliers and markets. Blockchain plays a role here too, giving buyers real-time visibility into stock levels and transport updates, helping them pivot fast when preferences shift or challenges pop up. But even with all these digital tools, it still boils down to one simple truth. Handling herring is a delicate, unpredictable, and constantly moving target. You've got biology, weather, politics, and consumer moods all colliding. And the cost of getting it wrong? It's not just financial. It can shake entire supply chains that link ocean to farm, tech to table, or even fish to forest in places where agroforestry depends on every input being just right. Now, with all these moving parts, you'd think there's no room for innovation. But that's the twist. Some of the smartest, most futuristic systems in the food world are being built around this exact fish. You'd be surprised how much cutting-edge technology is wrapped up in a single frozen fish. Herring may not look like much, but behind the scenes, it's the reason floating factories exist. Ships built not just to catch, but to clean, gut, and flash-freeze fish right on the water. The second a herring hits the deck, it's on a path of automation, sorted by size, scanned for quality, and packed tighter than a smartphone assembly line. Today's vessels are part processor, part data center. AI-driven imaging systems inspect every catch, logging the condition and feeding that information directly into global traceability networks. It's not just for bragging rights, it's to satisfy the growing demand for clean, verified, responsibly handled seafood. These systems aren't slowing down either. In fact, they're adapting, linking up with remote cloud dashboards, feeding retailers and manufacturers real-time updates, helping them decide whether a shipment heads to human food production, agriculture, or even agroforestry support systems using fish meal to enrich soil. Storage and transport have leveled up just as fast. Modern reefers are digital ecosystems on wheels or floating at sea. Every detail is monitored. Temperature, humidity, oxygen levels. If anything shifts, alerts are sent before damage is done. These sensors don't just protect the fish, they preserve profit margins, reputations, and food safety protocols stretched across thousands of miles. Then there's the shift towards sustainability. 
Hybrid engines, route optimization software, and fuel tracking are all part of the package now. Some systems even log the carbon footprint of a single crate. And when you zoom out, that kind of data changes how companies operate, from port choices to packaging materials. Even small coastal hubs are getting an upgrade. In Norway and West Africa, communities are tying into cold chain networks through shared storage and blockchain-based tracking. With this tech, a fish caught in the Arctic can be traced, barcode to barcode, to a cosmetics lab in Germany or a street vendor in Accra. It's not science fiction, it's daily business now. Behind it all are the folks running the show, the engineers fine-tuning freezer settings, the logistics teams responding to a container alert in the middle of the night, the processors adapting on the fly when an order changes format. It's a dance between human decision-making and machine consistency, and it only works because both sides are evolving together. Still, for all this innovation, there's always one thing that's out of anyone's control. What happens when supply, demand, and global politics collide? So now you know. Moving 8 million tons of herring isn't just about fish. It's about precision. It's about tech. It's about feeding the world in ways most people never think about. What surprised you the most? The floating factories? The AI-powered containers? Or the fact that herring ends up in everything from fertilizer to face cream? Tell us in the comments, because we'd love to hear your take. And if you found this interesting, there's a whole world of supply chain secrets waiting for you. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and keep learning how everyday products make their way across the planet in extraordinary ways. And hey, don't miss the next video showing on screen, you're going to love it.